What up, doe family? What up, everybody? It's your boy, Halley. Back again from the Monster Gang Detroit represented to the day that I die. Boy, is burning in the D. Woo! Hot, boy. Hot. Throw an egg up in the air. Watch it come down fried. I'm talking hot. <laughs> what up, doe? Look, man. I just wanted to talk to y'all for a second. Take a little bit of y'all time just to tell you some of my stories. You know how I am. You know, give you some facts, some knowledge, some opinions, kicking in the door, knocking in the door. You know how we do. Um, you know, just want to talk to y'all for one second. Um, this thing was about. I haven't been to the club in a long time, you know, like it's been a while. Like I ain't played the club scene in a long time ever since. Like I was doing a lot of the shows, you know, but. My boys hit me up like, you know, bro, hey, man, let's go out, bro. You know what I'm saying? We down here doing the thing. And I'm like, you know, YOLO, I guess. You know, you only live once or whatever. So I'm like, all right, bro, we could do that. So it was one thing that was just kind of messing with me, you know. Um, we went to two different clubs, you know. But the second club we went to, um, basically, you know, the waitress was in there and... She was taking, you know, doing what waitresses do. So my boy called the waitress over, you know, she ordered, he, he ordered a drink. And um, then like a guy over here, he called the waitress over and asked, he was ordering a drink. You know how you catch stuff out the side of your eye. You know, I kind of caught the guy, he kind of put the, put his hand on her back. And then as he was ordering the drink, you know, he started to cop a feel. Like he started grabbing on her, like straight, no chaser, like feeling on her. And... My first thought was like, you know, do I be a hero? Do I, you know, go over there? Like, what are you doing? Like, you shouldn't be doing, you know, how most people think you should do, you know. So I was just kind of like, man, thrown aback by the situation. And then as the night went on, I seen that this was just a pattern that was happening in, in this particular place. And at the same time, you don't want to take away someone's means of income. Like, I'm not saying she was doing it for that, but, you know, sometimes people go through that kind of stuff because it gives them more tips or more money. But um, before the night was over, you know, I I, I kind of was talking to her for a second, you know, just was like, you know, um, I see like it's a bunch of men in here that's just kind of like predators and they're just kind of like every time you go by them, they're just feeling on you and doing this and that. And, you know, and I'm like, you know, you should stand up for yourself. You know, you shouldn't let these guys do you like that. And her response was, well, I'm just kind of used to it, you know, and, you know, and in that moment, I guess, you know, my stomach fell in my shoes because I was thinking like, man, you know. They have done this so much to her that she's numb to it. And these men are trash, you know. And as I'm talking to her, you know, I'm just, you know, kind of giving her that motivational speech. And she's just like, well, you know, my family has told me that also. And, you know, it's like it's a job. You come in, you do what you do, and you're going to have different people who are going to act a certain way. And I'm like, just call it what it is, perverts. They're, they're predators. They're, you know, these are older gentlemen that was in there. So it's like, just call it what it is. You know, you're a young lady and they're copping their feels anytime you get close to them. Like, that's a trash man. Like, they should be held accountable for the things that they were doing. But I think she had become so numb to it because that's her everyday life that it didn't really affect her like it affected me in my mind. You know, and they say you can't feel worse for a person than they feel for themselves. So, you know, I just, you know, gave her a few words of motivation and then I was on my way. You know, I, you know, it wasn't nothing more than that. Just was trying to see where her head was at with the situation. But I come to the conclusion that a lot of these men are trash. A lot of men are trash. A lot of women are trash, too. Don't get me wrong. But this one, this story, this particular story is pertaining to how trash the men were and how they were treating her. And that to me is is a mental thing. 
you have someone that may get may have a husband that beats on them and then the wife becomes numb to the beating it doesn't make it right it just means that that be, that has became a part of her life and she has accepted it that is a mental disorder that that is something that's not normal that's dysfunctional and in our time we have a way of hiding the dysfunction even though it's in plain sight so there's really nothing i'm not saying that i can be a hero or any of that stuff but i'm just calling them out like you guys need to be more accountable for the things that you're doing there are a lot of deadbeats there are a lot of uh, men who cheat there are a lot of men who um, beat on women there are a lot of men who lie and, and, and take their girlfriend's car and be gone for two days. There are men who won't get a job. There are men who won't pay bills. There are men who will play PlayStation every day for five years straight in the same T-shirt with the yellow rings around the sleeves. You know... I, I, I'm all for men because I'm a man and I understand how we get mistreated in this day and age, but you have to be held accountable also. You know, you have to get up and handle your responsibilities as a man and not defer to the woman to say, oh, she's supposed to do everything and she's supposed to clean and she's supposed to cook and she's supposed to pay the bills and I get to have sex or do whatever I want when I want. That is not good that is not love that's dysfunction now i'm not leaving women out of this because there are a lot of women who are in the same boat as a lot of those men but we'll get to that on another day but i just you know i want to know like i know that some people have had these experiences and some people haven't you know, and some people are in environments where these type of things happen. You know, it, that's just like there are women who use what they got to get what they want. Like the Players Club, you know, we use what we got to get what we want. Like there are women who, who are that way. And then there are women who aren't. And, and life is a little harder and, and things are a little different for them. So, you know, just let me know, like if you have a story, if you have something that has happened in your life similar, or maybe you might be going through it right now and you just want to, you know, let it out, you know, let me know. Say what you got to say. Speak your voice. Let it be known. Let it be heard. Let people hear your story and what you got to say in this world, because your voice matters just like everyone else's. Until next time, it's your boy Hallie and I'm out.